Hello everybody, welcome to another great episode of Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. My name is John. We are in the world famous Sipping Den. Down here I review everything that has anything to do with alcohol and coffee. You'll find the coffee reviews on Sunday, sometimes during the week, but always on Sunday. And if you drink coffee every day and you want to watch different reviews and watch me review coffee while you're drinking coffee, then just go to the playlist. I have a couple hundred coffees on there. All broken down because my playlist is broken down in categories and subcategories. Check it out. Um, well, I always say if I don't review it, I shouldn't really be drinking it. Every video I do, the first comment's always pinned because it has a link to the playlist that pertains to the river I'm reviewing. In this case, Italian red wine. A cool one. I'll tell you why. Um, it's Sangiovese, which is the main ingredient. In Chianti. Uh, it's uh, from Tuscany, which is the region that Chianti is in. Uh, see if I can pronounce right. Pietra, Pietra Mirana. That's how I would say it in Italy. Pietra Mirana. That's the winemaker. It is 100% uh, Sangiovese. It is an IGT. Now, there's a whole story about the different rankings of Italian wines by quality according to the government. DOCG, DOC, IG, and so on. Um, a lot of winemakers, when they first came out with these rules in Italy, didn't want to follow it. It made it too restrictive. Some of them that bucked the rules, like one of the rules that Chiani can never have anything but Sangiovese in it, they started blending in some of the noble grapes from France, like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, they became known as Super Tuscans. Uh, they now allow that in Chiani. Um, took some time, took some great wines being made. The reason I'm excited about this is this was um, it's between 10 and $12. So we're going to see how it tastes. First look at the color, it's always fun. It is a uh, 2018 Sangiovese can be a rough grape. I mean, very tannic because it can last a long time. It can age and that'll soften over age as the air gets in, micro air gets in through the uh, cork. This is the cork that wasn't it. Um, of course, decanting uh, helps speed up that process. I gave a rough pour on purpose to uh, kind of aerate it. Now, this one isn't made to last a thousand years, all right? It's 10 to 12 dollars. But it is the Sangiovese, and the Sangioveses, Chianis are made to go with food, and food should contain some fat because that tannin that you get, that natural preservative that makes lets wine age without going bad for so long, uh, tastes like uh, if you put a tea bag in your mouth or iced tea that's way too strong. Once you have fat, it coats your tongue and it will make it almost impossible to taste that and you'll get all the other flavors so it's meant to be eaten with food especially food with some fat meats sausages cheeses so on and so forth so let's give it a smell this does have light wood aging i don't know how long but not very long but some dark fruits and i say dark fruits not because i'm smelling a million dark fruits but because I think people are going to pick out, everybody's going to pick out different ones, but I think most people would say blackberries, black cherry, plums, you know, stuff like that. So I put that in that ballpark. Most of you will probably get that if you could smell this wine. Ooh, there's a nice, um, I was going to say leave. I was going to say, you know, tobacco, because tobacco is a leaf, of course. Kind of a tobacco or a woodsy, leafy smell. We'll leave it there. Ripe bread fruits, tobacco, leaf type smell. Let's give it a taste. Do an acclimation sip, then we'll go in for the kill.
very light. Um, there's not a big punch to it. It's fruity. It's light tasting. Uh, it's not very structured or layered. There's nothing bad about the taste of it. It's acidic. It's juicy. My mouth is watering. I got tannin on the back, but not big and bold. Like I said, most Sangioveses are. This is lighter. Um, I guess not being in the wood or in contact with the skin as long. Uh, it's um, a very drinkable um, by itself, really, which is, see, you don't have to have a lot of food with this because this one's just kind of light and fruity. And that's the beauty of a $10 wine. You're not going to get a lot, but it's, it's one you don't think about. Nothing bad coming out of this. There's no bad faults in this, if you're judging it for what it is. Uh, I mean, it's not that there's no after, bad aftertaste or bad, funny taste or smell to it. It's light. It's not a lot of complexity. You're not going to pick out a ton of stuff. But I'll tell you what, it's enjoyable. You can drink it for $10, $12, man. Have it with your spaghetti. Have it with your pizza. It is a fantastic wine for that. You can even have it by itself. Uh, wherever you drink wine without food, watching a movie, whatever. I like it. I think it's very good. And I think you all should probably give this one a try because you cannot beat the price. And when you put the price in with the quality, what I'm getting out of this, it's up there. It's really good. It really is.